I want to buy a copy of Bone Storm. Here's 99 cents. Uh, allow me to summarize the proposed transaction. You wish to purchase Bone Storm for 99 cents. Net profit to me, negative $59. Oh, oh, please take my $59. I don't want it. It's yours. It, it, it. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And with all the events that we've kind of been noticing within the comic book industry, obviously we made a video last week kind of talking about the things that we were noticing at Marvel and it, it kind of signaled changes ahead where they're going to be streamlining the line, putting more focus on areas outside of, you know, floppy comics, periodical comics, whatever you want to call them. Obviously with what we saw, you know, within the last 48 hours over at DC Comics, the scale of production as far as classic comic books in periodic form is going to be kind of shrinking down. And we're seeing now that those two entities, Marvel being a part of Disney, DC Comics being kind of a part of Warner Media, AT&T, is there's a change in attitude as far as being the market leaders. And I think it is going to come with an added um, opportunity for people that can, can come into the market and come with, with fresh ideas. And here to talk with me about that is my good friend over from Comics by Perch, the Poobah of Comics himself. Perch, how you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on. And, and yeah, I'm excited to talk about this topic. Well, I'm excited you can make it. Before we get started, I do want to say if you've been coming around lately, but you haven't decided to take the leap and subscribe to the channel, there's not a better time than ever. Just do it right now. It's a good time. Definitely hit the bell for notifications. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the content on this video. Give us an enormous thumbs down and some feedback in the comments section if we got it all wrong so we can uh, improve the content in the future. And uh, we definitely appreciate that. You can go to Purchase Channel. There's a link in the video description as well. So there's going to be an icon in the last 30 seconds if you want to subscribe to his channel as well. Now, Perch. Yeah. I think, you know, when we thought about DC Comics and Marvel Comics, you know, they were the innovators, the market leaders, the ones coming up with the new ideas, the things that were going to kind of change the industry moving forward, whether it be how they're putting comics out, uh, the kind of stories that they were telling, what they could do with the art and everything like this. But now that they're a part of Disney, AT&T, uh, Warner Media, it feels like they're kind of just following the trends and other people are going to be the trendsetters. We know that Raina Telmeyer at one point brought her comic book idea, Smile, to some independent publishers. They didn't feel like it was their market, so she went out and kind of created her own market with Scholastic, and now DC and Marvel are both chasing that audience. It feels like there's a huge opportunity with people with good ideas and great stories to kind of fill in this space and make periodic comics cool again. Yeah, I agree. I, I think so. This is going to be an interesting video, I think, with you and, and, and the topic we have, because I think a lot of people, um, you know, it can take a lot of heart. This is a glass half full situation, but it's, it is only a glass half full situation if you make it that. So it's it's not like the industry is is perfect. There's clearly still a lot of problems. Yeah, people who are going to be drug along by the publishers are, are definitely going to continue to struggle in many cases, or at least put their fate in somebody else's hands. But if you can take your own momentum, if you can if you can do something for yourself, like Tugmeyer did, and and in many other industries, when they hit things like this, um, become disruptors, become people who can actually, uh, you know, make their own market and make their own success. I think that the time in comics is is probably ever been better for people like that. All the the logistical tools are now out of the way and it's possible for you to make your empire. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of uh, different ideas on how to do this. People are going digital only. We're seeing people doing kind of crowdfunding where they're selling comics more in volumes, but at higher price. You know, there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat. Obviously there are some um, independent publishers that aren't owned by corporations. Do you think about image, but image really feels like with the content they produce and the kind of comics they have, they're probably going to need to kind of start veering over to that graphic novel format. It probably fits their writers and the products that they're putting out there. So I think there is going to be a dearth. People that love periodic comics maybe stepped away because the price was too high. They didn't really like the stories or whatever. There's going to be a market there, and there will be a revival one day when somebody decides they've built a better mousetrap and realize that there's a market there to be had if you're willing to put out the right product. Obviously, we do see a big focus from DC and Marvel to a lesser extent towards digital. And I do think that's going to play a big part in it going forward. But I don't think DC is really attacking it right quite yet. I think they want to get individual sales on comics. But it seems like this was already done kind of when Apple did iTunes. Remember when that started? They were selling 
yep. you know, songs as individual pieces of, of property that you could buy, but you didn't really own. Yep. And it, it turns out that subscription models are the key. Yeah, I, I, exactly. We've seen this evolution of, of the business change place and, and the music one is a great one. I mean, you went from a traditional box store uh, album full full set that you had to buy. And that that business model existed forever. And it benefited the really big labels. It benefited the people who had the marketing, had the distribution, could get the relationships with, in this case, the record stores or, or wherever it happened to be. And it sat that way for a long time, um, unmovable. And, and before digital did come in to disrupt it, it was threatened by piracy and by just expensive costs. People thought that the price point of $15 for a CD was just ex too expensive in a lot of cases. And this feeling like the big studios would have one or two kind of hit songs on that album and then, you know, 14 crappy ones or whatever it happened to be. And but they, you know, they were just filling up. It's, it's where the whole B-sides term and everything came in. And so what happened is, is people from outside the industry, in this case, uh, Apple, others started selling music by tracks that shifted the market to some extent, just like you said. And then from there, we've seen uh, streaming services, we've seen subscription services, we've seen a lot of different splinters of this concept. But, you know, it, it is how the markets has evolved. And so if you take the same thing, you apply it to comics. The opportunity is out there. The big guys, the Marvel and DC, and I, I agree with you, I think Image as well, they're going to continue to pursue the market they have. That's what they're promised to kind of their corporate people. It's it's more risky to take chances. In, in that case, you know, big companies struggle to disrupt. And I think outsiders, independent comic companies, um, individuals have a great opportunity to come in here and do that disruption. And it could take many different forms, but I do think there is an opportunity for monthly periodicals in digital, in a different form of distribution. Uh, the, the, the trick is a lot of people's mentality is still stuck in this. I've got to produce a comic and then I've got to go talk to Diamond and then I've got to go get it to local comic shop. And that may be important to your overall business plan, but it doesn't have to be step one. And I think a lot of people trap themselves by believing that's where they have to start. And they realize that starting there is logistically very difficult as an individual or even a small company. It's expensive. It's maybe the hardest way to go and get, get recognition. It's a very slow process. But by starting there, you're, you're almost off the wrong track. And it's, it's, you, can, you can get there in the end. It's, it's an interesting time that we find ourselves in. It is. There is a company out there that's kind of deciding that they're, they're going to enter the market with some of these ideas that we're talking about here called Bad Idea, it's headed up by uh, Dinesh Shamdasani, who was uh, the owner of Valiant Comics. I believe Warren Simmons, who was the editor-in-chief there, is also one of the partners. There's a, there's a few guys, and they're going with their own model as far as distribution, and they're kind of doing a viral campaign right now. It's something to do with a button. I don't really get what the campaign is, Perch, but I like the idea that they're going to enter the market through a non-traditional means and try and be trendsetters and do something different. Yeah, I, I uh, the, the campaign itself, I, I agree. I think the campaign is a, is a poor idea. But the under the, the beneath that, the idea of disrupting the market, the idea of entering in and giving product out in a, in a different way is a good one. Uh, TKO has tried some different things as well. There's a couple of people who are trying different models. And I think that's smart. Uh, you, you take a look at other kind of new entrants. And I think with DC... Uh, going through the layoffs, there's going to be some of those executives are going to form their way into new companies and there's going to be some new ventures. Chris Rael is saying he's going to do something new uh, from IDW. I think you're going to see a lot of these little attempts. And I think some of them will do the bad ideas route. Some of them will do the TKO route. And then others are like uh, artists and artisans, uh, for example. It's, it's going to be how can we raise some money and get comics into Diamond. And I think we're going to see a definite split between those two approaches. I just feel like the, uh, the the innovation one, even if there's mistakes made, is going to be far more successful for people. Uh, at the end of the day, the big advantage that Marvel and DC still maintain, despite the layoffs and everything else, is that they have the brand recognition and they have the market clout. So they can kind of snap their fingers and say, you know, we want the front cover of previews. We want if, if you're fighting that game, you're fighting a David and Goliath style game. So the trick is to have a different do, play a different game. Don't don't go on to their field where they have all the advantages. Try something different. Get some brand recognition out there. Get connected to your fans in a different way. I, I mean, this is why I say the crazy part about comics right now is that you can, if you can achieve a three to five thousand copy sale, you're you're in business with the low end of the big guys. 
And that's not an insurmountable thing to do. You, you can't accomplish that. So, you know, I, I think there's a ton of options out there for small publishers and it's, it's just time for them to take it. What is your thoughts on print on demand? That's always seemed like maybe, is it the future of comics? Maybe it's the future of independent comics. Maybe not the, the big publishers or whatever, but it seems like a viable plan for somebody that didn't, you know, didn't want to have to have warehouse space, didn't want to have to, you know, pay for the housing and things like that. You print it on demand. There are certainly services out there that can do that at pretty large scale at this point. Do you think that's, you know, something maybe just somebody with a comic book can do print on demand or maybe two or three different properties can go out there and t attack the market that way? It seems like it's, it's kind of waiting to be had. Yeah, I think print on demand is, is definitely something small companies should pursue because it takes away a lot of the logistical costs and the things that can tip you over. The thing that print on demand doesn't do is your marketing plan, is how you get awareness for your brand. And and I think that's probably the area where more people struggle. They just they 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 in, in, they're maybe trapped in a mentality watching Marvel, watching DC and some of these other companies say we've got to do kind of what they do or we've got to, you know, get our name out there like them. And the answer is one that may not be the smartest thing to do anyway, because maybe Marvel and DC their marketing is awful, or maybe they're they're on a declining cliff where their marketing is concerned anyway. Um, and two, it it just it doesn't fit this disruption that that people are after. So I think printing on demand is is going to be a huge tool that's going to be used by independent individual creators. I think it's going to be very very powerful, very successful. But they've got to they do have to have that. How do we get our how do we get people to know we exist and that that is the part that i see a lot of people struggling with absolutely and one of the things i've seen some creators do and i think this is a bad idea and a bad path i think you've talked about it on your channel a, a time or two is that in order to get the the name out and get get awareness of the product that they give give away the initial issue or two for free like here yeah. you can have access to it for free but it kind of devalues the product right off the bat. If I got it for free, why would I want to pay for it the next time? Yeah. I kind of like what Valiant did back in the day, even though this is old school Jim Shooter Valiant, where they had these zero issues that you could get, but you had to work for them. Like you had to go and do this and this and this, and then you could go and, and do your rebate and you get your zero issue comic. I think that was a, a cool idea to, to, yes, you did get a free comic, but you had to work for it. You know what I mean? You, you had to go and, and do a few things, and then you got, you know, your reward for the hard work that you put in. No, absolutely. I think harnessing the community to get your marketing out there is smart, especially if you're small. And I think it, I, I, giving away free product too quickly it absolutely sets the wrong expectation in in the brand. So, so making it have, attaching value to it through work, if not you know commerce, is is a good plan. And I think it's something more people can use. And, and I mean, I mean, you look at some of the independent efforts that have gone well. And if we're talking about kind of new disruption and things that are that are working in the market, of course, you do have to talk about uh, what's going on with crowdfunding. And you get uh, Cyberfrog has, has turned into a you know a crowdfunding brand that people know. And there's a lot of things behind that. Uh, but one of those, one at least small piece, and I think actually one of the most critical pieces to it that that people overlook is that the fans of the artist, in this case, fans of Ethan Van Skyver actively promote and and push his book so i mean ethan's doing streams and other things himself the creator but he did set up a mechanism uh, you know either on purpose or by chance where people can come in and they can you know they, that they help carry the noise of this book they give it brand recognition it, it allows him to compete at a level of a much bigger company because his brand is is being talked about, it's it's out there. There's there's links to it. Sometimes unfavorably. Maybe sometimes people are talking about it because he's a terrible person. But the the brand is known, and there's a lot of people out there who struggle at that ability to kind of get their you know for lack of a better word get their community to do some of that work for them to get them out there pushing and and promoting the book as well. Some you can call that a loyal customer base, you can call it a number of different things, but there's a specific action around getting your customers to promote your book. And this seems to have happened semi-organically with that book with Cyberfrog. You see a little bit with Richard Meyer's stuff. That's why you see these books always getting a lot of attention and 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 other things. And if you're a small independent creator, um, this is something you have to consider. You have to consider how you're going to get people beyond yourself out there talking about your book and pointing people to it. Yeah, the one thing that uh, Ethan and Richard do better than anyone is they get the people that don't like them to promote their material for them. That too. Almost, 
more than the, their their fans. They're they're almost ardent, <laughs> like rabid at, at putting his name out there. And anytime he says something that they they might not like, they they put his name out there. And you know maybe Joe Schmo, uh, who's who hasn't maybe taken the leap over to Cyberpunk, like you know what, the the right kind of people don't like Ethan Van Sky. Yeah. It's time to go support the book. No, it's 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 a dangerous thing to play with. I mean, negative um, advertising or or you know, it it's it can turn on you very quickly. It's hard to harness. So it's it's if you're a new kind of unknown person coming out, you know, I I wouldn't uh, run I'm out there. Yeah, be be careful. <laughs> you could very quickly get yourself in the wrong place. However, you want to be JDA. You, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. You don't want you you cannot get that kind of negative heat. Um, too strong on your product before you have the right balance, or, or then you're just you're, you're spending all your time fighting. But you're absolutely right, and this is a crazy thing about um, you know the, the Comics Gate and Cyberfrog and those kinds of things is is that in a, a lot of cases, so much of the attention and the promotion, and frankly, I think the sales would drop if, frankly, people who hate it would shut up about it. And I know that's hard to do because as soon as you say something like that, people go, well, I, if I don't talk about it, I'm, in, I'm enabling the bad guys or whatever they think. But literally, I, you're absolutely right. When, when people go on Twitter and constantly push it, they're putting money in these people's pockets. And, and you know, I, 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 it's, it's just nuts. This is not the case, but you, it always makes you think that somewhere in some back smoky room, all these people are coming together to formulate the marketing plan. It's like, all right, you're going to go real mad at me and I'm going to go bad at you. And this is how we're going to get all the sales to rise. But of course that's not happening, but um, the, the direct result of negative attention to money uh, can't be denied. You know, just thinking about some of the stuff we talked here, where do you think the future of comic books is? Where do you think the opportunity for someone to enter the market and be that trendsetter that in five years, DC and Marvel are going, what, you know, we we drop right. floppies or we we uh, deprioritize them to go over these other markets that Raina Telgmeier, Dad Pilkey created, and some of these YI uh, author graphic novels created. We 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 left this market behind, and boom, look at this wonderful audience that's there that we need to go get again because now it's hot. I, I mean, I think there's a lot of opportunity for everyone, but there's one key fundamental to all this in that that if you're an independent creator, you're trying to come in, you're trying to disrupt, you're trying to get your stuff out. Um, you have to view this as a job, not as a hobby or some kind of crazy fun pastime or something you do to to own the other side from time to time. You have to view it as a job. You've got to wake up every morning and you got to try and move your brand forward and your product forward. Because the reality is there are, there are printing services, there's logistical services, there's there's print on demand, there's uh, different forms of social media with with all kinds of video and, and text and, and everything else. There's marketing services. You can go on to uh, sites and hire people to promote and run campaigns for you for under hundred bucks on anything. Uh, there's there's tons of, of options and availability for you. If you have the creative talent, meaning you have a good idea and you have some wherewithal around uh, either hiring somebody to bring it in or, or whatever, but you have to view it as a job. You have to wake up every morning. You have to try and put something forward. You have to get product out. You have to be on time as much as you can. You have to communicate with your audience and you have to consider all those different people. If you run it like a disciplined process, you're already light years ahead of other people. Because a lot of people who enter this market are are still trying to be like Marvel or DC. Or I hear so many independent people who say, you know, one day I'll get Marvel or DC to notice me and then I'll get a job over there. That's their end game. And if that's your end game, then you're focusing a lot less on the product you're putting out, a lot more on networking and, and just trying to play to the right people and everything else. And you're, you're unlikely to be successful in that market. You've got to view this as going to work. And, and for, you know, it's, it's tough. And that's, you know, that kind of uh, dedication, that kind of mindset is what's going to free people from these, uh, basically from the strings of the industry that, you know, this is the price point that you have to sell. This is the, the amount of pages that have to be in a comic book. These are the platforms that your comic book has to be put out on. This is how you have to distribute it. This is what a cover, you know, free yourself from all of this. Don't think about what, what you've loved in the past 10 years, what's made comics successful. Think about where comics should be in the next five years and go and try and achieve that because that's where the future is. And I think that's where a, a lot of really brilliant young creators and minds in the industry are going to take us. And, and somebody's going to lead us. It's it's yeah. going to happen. This isn't just something that's going to die away. It's something that there will be a revival. But you do you want to be the one leading or you want to be the one following? That's the question.
Well, I, I, absolutely. And I think the opportunity is there where a lot of people can lead. You do not need a, a huge name. You do not need a, a, some kind of tie or connection into Marvel or DC. You can lead and disrupt and do something different. Um, and, and I think we're going to see a lot of people who will trail along and follow and be very bitter. I mean, you know, the, you know, probably the safest prediction right now over the next three years is the social media is going to be filled with extremely bitter people in the comic industry who have been kind of playing it the old way and, and just don't want to admit at this point, the old way doesn't work. It's, it's, it's like people who cling on to old business models long after it's clear that they're dead and just stand around kind of wishing that the world was different. Uh, I, I see a lot of people tweeting right now with DC talking about how, you know, one day, hopefully, uh, you know, these people, these people who like got let go should be glad they got let go because now they can go to a better comic company and, and where they're treated with respect and, and get insurance and get all the money they deserve. Sounds awesome. What's that company? I, I don't, that, that company doesn't exist. So go make it. That's, that's what you're going to have to do. Um, you can't wait around for this opportunity to just open the door for you and, and then you get a waltz in, uh, which is how, frankly, a lot of these people got their jobs in, in the big two to begin with. So maybe that's what they're used to. But if, if you put in hard work, I think it could be very successful. Yep. Just think a few years ago, Raina Telgemeier brought her comic book to a comic book publisher. They said, this is not right for us. She went out, she created her own market. Just a few years ago, I believe Netflix was offered to Blockbuster. They said, yeah. you can purchase this. Blockbuster said, this isn't the future of home entertainment. We're going to pass. It's not worth the money. Where's Blockbuster? Where's Netflix? There, there's tons of stories like that. It's If you have a good idea, if you're willing to put in the work to disrupt, then and, and I think the other one is if you're willing to question, question if what exists now needs to exist, whether it's the traditional publishing market, the big two, or crowdfunding, any of that stuff, you should always be questioning if the model in front of you is a viable one. If it doesn't fit you, don't try and conform to it. Do your own thing. If, if there's a, if there's things to learn from it, learn from it. But you, you question absolutely everything and and put in the hard work. It's, it's amazing how many people are successful who are not as talented as others, but just willing to wake up every day and put in six to eight hours worth of work. You can you can achieve a lot more than people who are naturally talented, but but don't have the, the grit. Well, Perks, we, we went a little long on this one. This is a great discussion. I hope people enjoy this. Definitely, like I said, give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this. And I think we got a, a lot of good information out there. Hopefully some people are inspired about what they're going to be, what comic books are going to be here in five years. And definitely, uh, if you enjoy what Perch has brought to the channel, but you haven't subscribed to his channel, there should be an icon on the screen right now so we can go over and sub to his channel. I highly recommend it. Between Thinking Critical and Comics by Perch, you're getting well over an hour worth of content about the comic books and pop culture every day. Yeah. Thank you very much. And, and uh, thanks for listening. And, and hopefully you have some great ideas of your own. If you're willing to share them, throw them in the comments. We'd love to see them. But don't share your million-dollar idea fully. Yes. Keep that to your patent. Patents is what you want. <laughs>